Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. A Sulphur Springs police officer saw Curtis Lee Reynolds, age 56 of Sulphur Springs, almost strike an officer with emergency lights activated. Reynolds was arrested for driving while intoxicated, third or more, a felony three, and is in Hopkins County Jail held on a $15,000 bond. When Reynolds narrowly missed the officer, the officer that observed the incident activated his emergency lights and sirens in an attempt to stop Reynolds. Reynolds refused to stop, but finally did stop at the Easy Mart on Main Street. When the officer questioned Reynolds, Reynolds sp spoke with slurred speech, had bloodshot eyes, and an was unsteady on his feet when he exited the vehicle. Field sobriety tests and sobriety tests at the jail proved him to be or showed him to be drunk. Although the deadline for applications for grants to schools is December 20th, the application is online and ready to be completed by schools in Hopkins County that desire to apply for one of the 2019 grants from the John and Deborah Gillis Foundation. A total of $100,000 in grants over a three-year period will be awarded annually to qualifying schools to support instructional programs, staff development, and other initiatives that align with the Foundation's mission. The John and Deborah Gillis Foundation will provide 10 annual Bright Star scholarships to seniors graduating from any of the seven high schools in Hopkins County beginning in the spring of 2019. Those scholarships are in the amount of $4,000 per semester, renewable for up to eight semesters. School campuses and students in the seven districts in Hopkins County, which are eligible for the Bright Star Scholarship and Grants to School program, include Cumbie, Como Picton, Miller Grove, North Hopkins, Saltillo, Sulphur Bluff, and Sulphur Springs. The first grants to schools will be issued in February 2019. The deadline for the Bright Star Scholarships is March 30th, 2019. Hopkins County retired or Hopkins Reigns retired school personnel are sponsoring a candidate forum focused on public education at the Sulphur Springs City Hall October 9th. The event features candidates for Lieutenant Governor, Texas District 2 State Senate, and Texas District 2 Representative. A meet the candidate begins at 5.30 and candidates will speak in turn beginning at 6 p.m. Each candidate will be given 10 minutes to present their views regarding public education. The order of speakers will be Representative, Senate, and Lieutenant Governor. All Democrat candidates have committed to attend the forum. Only one Republican, Dan Flynn, Representative District 2 incumbent, has committed to appear at the event. Hopkins Reigns Retired School Personnel Organization is a local chapter of the Texas Retired Teachers Association. Here's Don Julian with sports. The Lady Cats volleyball team opened district play last Friday at Roy City with a 3-1 loss. The Lady Bulldogs got off to a good start and they took set one 25-19. The Lady Cats let opportunity slip through their hands in set two as a 23-18 lead turned into a 23-25 loss. The Lady Cats did bounce back with a 25-23 win in set three. In set four, the final two points of the set went to the Lady Bulldogs as they won that set 25-23 and the match 3-1. I talked about the loss with Lady Cats volleyball coach Justin Manus on Monday morning. Oh, definitely not the way we wanted to open. It just just a rough night all the way around, you know, just a, a lot of things didn't fall our way. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of things that we, we should have fought through. Uh, you know, I, thought, I thought there were some, some rough spots uh, just Friday night as a whole. Uh, but that's just the way it goes, you know. You, you have to play through some of that stuff. And not taking away anything from Roy City. Roy City played well, and uh, we just couldn't capitalize when we needed to capitalize. And, 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 and just some, some momentum breakers we had, a lot of momentum breakers in, in that match. So, You know, and, and they're saying all that, you're still right there in three of the sets. 25 to 23 could go either way. You know, I honestly thought we were going to go into a fifth set. You know, I, I just kind of had that feeling uh, when we were up 23 to 18. You know, you need to close out on that no matter what happens. But uh, just unfortunately, we didn't you know that they were able to string together a run and, and, and beat us there. Uh, you know, some, some, some calls just kind of knocked the breath out of us and uh, we just couldn't recover. And so, uh, you know, as, as we progress forward, you know, we 
we got to forget about it and, and think about Lindale. And, you know, last year we were started out 0-2 and, and ended up running running 10 in a row. So uh, you just can't ever tell about this team, you know, that th this team is a team that can explode and, and, and play uh, play really, really well at times. I don't expect you to knock the officials, and I never, you know, say that they were the reason you lose or anything like that. They, you know, but it seemed like we did get the bulk of the calls, but is that, is that something that we work on, I guess, to try to – are they just sticklers, or you just have to make sure every hit's clean? And uh, you, you know, at, at this point, you know, after playing 31 matches, you would expect to get those calls a lot if they were an issue. It, it's 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 just really tough to get to the first district game, and then all of a sudden, it becomes an issue. I mean, how do you how do you tell your kids, hey? I guess you've been doing it all wrong for 31 matches prior. You know, it, 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 it's tough. I mean, officials are going to be different. And, uh, you know, not everything was the officials' fault. You know, th some things we could have done better. Uh, but, you know, I really feel like a lot of that got into our heads because when you haven't been called that many times the entire year and you get all those calls in one season, it, 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 it gets in a kid's head. But, again, we put ourselves in situations to win even without that, and we should have taken care of business. Right. Um, that's all I want to say about that. Now uh, you have Lindale and uh, in the latest uh, GCEA. TGCA? TGCA. Uh -huh. One of these times in an interview, I'll get it right. But anyway, they're ahead of us. Uh, so obviously they're well thought of in class five. Oh, yeah. No, they're going to be a good team. Uh, you know, but I think every team in this district has a chance to beat anybody. It's going to be tough for any team to go undefeated. Uh, it's all about matchups too. I mean, some teams match up differently against other teams, you know, just depending on what they have. Uh, so you, you just can't ever tell. If we show up and play, it's, it should be interesting. Give Miller Grove Athletic Director and Cross Country Coach Gary Billingsley credit for some thinking outside the box. With rainy weather all around Northeast Texas this past weekend, Coach Billingsley took his Hornets and Lady Hornets teams all the way to Corpus Christi for the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islander Classic. He probably was also looking for a competition that will serve his teams well later on when the stakes are high. The Lady Hornets competed against 303 runners in Class A through Class 4A, and they finished ninth out of 36 teams. Joe Lee Fox was 25th in the race. Cassidy Shaney was 28th. Lauren Bullard was 51st. Alexa Pellerose was 119th. Georgia Bissonette was 136th. Laney Burnett was 149th, and Harley Watson was 173rd. The Hornets competed in the gold division with the best runners in all classifications in Region 4. The Hornets were 18th out of 29 teams. There, there were 217 total runners. Isaiah Billingsley was 16th. Grant Earp was 86th. Lance Davis was 121st. Kobe Robertson was 150th. Matt Brignan was 179th. And Lexton Sly was 205th. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.